just sort of the support of the game. Uh, obviously, you you were a referee for how long were you a referee for? Like a couple of six years. years. Six years, yeah. So, and and I look, I'll, I'll share my opinion quick, real quickly here. I'm not a big referee fan. We can make a whole other podcast on that. Let's be clear. But I think something that I've really accepted as a coach, as a parent, as a basketball player, more often than not, okay, is that the referees I will, uh, you know, are critical to the game, no doubt. Okay, and we all talk about that they're human. You guys obviously will make your calls and based upon your judgments and things like that. Uh, and it's a level of respect, okay, that I think that as a player and a coach and a parent has to be evident that when a call has been made, you accept it. Because um, there's only, I, I don't think, actually, you know what, I'm not even going to say I don't think, I have never seen a call overturned in a game, okay, which is something we we're talking about in a professional game because now you've got replays and, you know, replay center and digital footage and so on and so forth, okay? But from a junior perspective, I've never seen a ref go, oh, well, you're disputing this foul call, so I've changed my mind now. I'm going to reverse it for you. <laughs> it never happens. So I think, again, there's a, there's a healthy level of obviously um, – voicing your opinion especially in the heat of a moment but at the end of the day i think that's something that needs to be quickly moved on and you focus on the next play okay and i think that's obviously a key component of successful basketball because you know you might miss the ball but you don't have to hold on to that for 40 minutes you let it go and you focus on making your next shot and it's exactly the same thing you'll get some bad calls that happens okay and you could uh obviously uh you know voice it you can talk about it the call's not going to change but you've got to move on and I think, uh, again, I'm sure we've both seen and you've seen as a referee where players and parents uh, do not move on. And obviously that's where it's crossing a line, I think. So my insider goss on this one would be a good referee would be aiming to be correct about 60 to 70% because there's not no way. That not 100. 100. How about no. 99? <laughs> no, I mean, look, aspirationally, yeah, but realistically, no, we... There, there are so many things that can happen, right? Especially, I'm like, here's a couple of extra things I'll talk about, especially as someone who did a lot of domestic. Um, <coughs> you're not even worried 100% of the time about what's happening on court. You know, like when you see people walking baseline going to their game or finishing their game or walking along baseline, they're actually standing in the position that we're supposed to get to, right? And we have to then periphery slash sometimes head check. Like, I don't want to crash into a child well, I'm trying to referee a game. I don't want to crash into someone. I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to hurt them. So we don't have uninterrupted space, all right? That's the first and foremost. Two, you'd actually be surprised how many times parents, scorers, coaches just make little niggling comments that are naturally going to trigger a human reaction of, well, I want to respond to that. I want to answer that. And if you, like, there's irony in this because, hey, you disagreed with my last call and you want to start an argument with me and you actually get my attention. Well, I'm about to miss another two or three calls because you've got my attention in this. Um, you said it. We don't change calls. We're actually told not to. We're taught not to. It is not to be stubborn. It is not to be, like, you know, gung-ho. It's actually because if we started changing calls, it just, all chaos right? Because then it comes into, well, now we're just encouraging people to come make their case. Who's more convincing? Imagine all the games. Imagine how much game time would be lost if we did hear you. Like we said, all right, you come over here, you come over here, let's have a chat. <laughs> let's have a so chat. Let's have a chat about this, foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, do the review process on every single thing. Um, the one thing that can occur, right, but it, it's never done for a good reason, you know, if I have five or six people yelling at me, which has happened in the past, um, all of a sudden it puts the pressure on me of, I want to get control of this game, right? I'm not enjoying this for myself. I don't like where this is heading. Everyone's getting really chippy. That's when you get tech fouls. That's when you get extra calls made because you're trying to gain control of the game. We're taught to do that as well, right? Because ultimately the referees are trying to control the game. The irony is a good game, the ref shouldn't blow the whistle at all right? If you're playing good, honorable defense and there's no accidental contact and there's no nothing else, it should just be out of bounds. It should be timeouts. It should be substitutions, really easy stuff. But it's never that. It's always some fouls in the game. And basketball is that hybrid of contact, non-contact, right? We understand that it is designed to be no contact, but there's supposed to be contact. 
there are things that go into it, such as, well, I got bumped a little bit on my drive, but then I beat the defender. Does it warrant a defensive call? Well, yeah, technically, because there was a foul, but not for flow of game. I, I, could, I could go for a while on this topic. So it's... Look, I think the best I'm, thing that I've seen in junior basketball is giving the refs those green shirts. Uh, I think, uh, you know, when they're starting off, uh, and I think, uh, like we've alluded, coaches have to start somewhere. Players have to obviously start somewhere. And refs have to start somewhere. And I think it's a sports is an imperfect game. That's the reality. It's, uh, you know, the, the players are going to make, uh, you know, uh, X amount of mistakes every game unless they don't miss a single shot or, or you know, grab every single rebound they jump at. It's not realistic. Coaches are going to obviously make decisions that don't always work. And I think referees, ultimately, you know, you guys make your calls and you're saying, claiming 60% of the time, perhaps at best, you're right. <laughs> that's, I think that's something that, you know, you have to accept. And uh, I think, I think uh, it's a, the irony probably is that if, if everything was perfect, like you sort of said, well, I don't know. I don't even know how that would look. It's just not sports, right? <laughs> That's the well, point. You, you have people fouled out. I'll be honest with you. You probably have people fouled out every single game because there is contact every game, especially your bigs, right? Like quite often I'd ref guys that were six foot five or six foot six and they'd battle with someone else and they're two big guys and, and they'd probably end up both fouling out. <laughs> um you know, and it takes two fouls, especially in domestic with five fouls as your cap. You know, it takes two fouls and then all of a sudden, well, I'm adjusting how I'm playing defense and you've changed how I want to play. And, you know, we're very conscious of all of this and, and we want it to flow very nicely. But also, you know, th this is the other cold hard fact. When I was refereeing basketball as an A-grade referee, it was $12.50 a game. Okay? So <laughs> if, if you think that I'm on the take for making calls... Where is the offer? Because getting paid 12 bucks 50 for essentially 40 to 50 minutes of work of work in which pretty much every game, someone swears at you or yells at you or gives you a smart ass response. Um, that's a bad trade. That's a bad trade. Um, you know, if you're going to get heckled for that much money, um, you know, you must really like basketball. I'm not sure, but it, <laughs> it's just not. And, you know, this is the thing, right? Like great character building for me and, and definitely a lot of resilience that had to come into, you know, my development as a person. But, but by God, like, it's just, you know, it, it's not the most important thing. You know, it, there is going to be a bad call one day and there is going to be things. And, you know, I've had people blame me for people being injured because I didn't call something three minutes ago and well, what's just naturally going to escalate. You know, the, the one thing I'd go back to is you control the controllable, right? And when you have 12 people on a court, if we're including the referees, um, you know, there's so many different variables there. You know, players have hit me with the ball by accident uh, because, you know, I'm part of the live court and, that's definitely not what they intended to do. And I wasn't intending to get hit by a ball. And I've been hit by a ball intentionally because I made a call and they didn't want me to get away with whatever it is that I did. I think, again, it comes down to that perspective. You know, the, the reason why I quit refereeing was because I refereed a gentleman in a G2 game on a Wednesday night at about 9.30 at evening. And uh, he slapped someone so hard on the wrist that both me and the other ref called the foul and neither of us were really in doubt that that was a foul and it was so obvious and it was no issue. And he lost his marbles. And so we teched him because he just couldn't stop. Yeah. And then we had to take him again because he was just out of control. And he decided to wait around. He decided to wait around for one more game for my shift to end, to follow me to my car, just to let me know that that was a really bad call that I made yeah. on a G2 game on a Wednesday night. Um, and as I was escorted back with the assistance of you know my basketball manager, I decided that, $12.50 isn't worth this anymore and I'm going to do something else. <laughs> Look, uh, you. I think that's that's the point where you significantly cross the line with mm. obviously supporting the game and supporting uh, and uh, obviously respecting and understanding the referees are part of the game. Uh, I think, I think, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a understanding. Look, honestly, as a parent and a spectator, really, that's what you are as a parent. I actually have nothing to say to the refs because <laughs> like what would be the point i have nothing to say i'm a spectator i'm just another person that's sitting here watching this game i have nothing to say as a coach i obviously at times have things to say but if i'm looking to focus on the success of my game plan i can't be committing too much energy to 
to calls that I already know, like I said earlier, aren't going to be changed. Okay. And that's the same message that I often communicate to my players. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I, of course, I will look for, you know, uh, understanding sometimes on calls that the referees make and things like that and whatnot and clarification sometimes. Okay. And I'll sometimes voice my disagreement, of course. Okay. But that's literally like a five second take and let's move on. Okay. And that's the thing. And I think that's when obviously players carry on and like this guy that obviously you just described as, uh, has awaited another you know hour to, to come and share that with you. I think that's the point where, you know, we don't, you know, no, no one wants that in the game of basketball. And it's obviously, yeah, that's what we uh, do not do not do that. <laughs> do not do that if you're going to be a parent coming to a game. Honestly, you might as well just come and, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe play footy. You can yell a bit more in footy because it's outdoors and, you know, no one can hear anyway, right? <laughs> that's the thing.